Hello everyone, this is Richard with Modern Health Span. This is part three of our All About NMA, and we will talk about our practical steps on dosage and how and when to take NMA. In case you missed part one and two, please find the All About NMA playlist link above on the screen. First, a quick disclaimer that this is just us sharing our anti-aging experience and some practical steps we have applied when taking NMA. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. In part two, we talked about the different kinds of NMN formats and what our criteria for choosing a supplier is. So now our NMN has arrived, what shall we do with it? First, we consider our dosage. How much should we take? Should we follow Dr. David Sinclair and take one gram? Here is what we found in our research. So you mentioned supplements you take, a, a gram of resveratrol, uh, sorry, not a, yeah, a gram? It is a gram, gram of resveratrol, what, a, whatever I pour out into my yogurt. And about now. a gram of um, nicotinamide. NMN. And, and that's also in your yogurt nicotine. as well? No, that, I can just take that as a capsule in the morning, uh, down it with a cup of coffee. Okay. And that's a pretty big boost, I find, physiologically. Uh, those three things, with caffeine included. First, let's look at what science has shown to be a safe dose. This is the one completed human trial, the effect of oral administration of NMN on healthy Japanese men. The study looked at 10 healthy men with an oral administration of 100, 250 and 500 milligrams per day. As they say, NMN was safely metabolized and they detected no deleterious effects. So it does seem that NMN is safe, at least in doses up to 500 milligrams. It should be noted that in mouse studies, the dose has been much higher also without bad effects. Now let's look at how much it would make sense to take. For that, we will look primarily at this paper, The Long-Term Administration of NMN Mitigates Age-Associated Physiological Decline in Mice. In the study, they gave mice NMN either 100 milligrams per kilogram or 300 milligrams per kilogram for 12 months and saw a number of benefits. I'm not going to go through all the results in this video, but you can see that it had a number of effects on different parts of the mouse physiology. Just to reiterate my comment on safety, they saw no obvious toxicity, serious side effects or increased mortality over the period. But they do say that the optimal dose seemed to depend on the physiological function. For some effects such as weight gain, insulin sensitivity and bone mineral density, 300 milligrams per kilogram was more effective, whereas others such as improved oxygen consumption, energy expenditure and physical activity, 100 milligrams was better. And for rod and cone photoreceptors, both doses seem to be the same. In the paper, the authors say that 100 milligrams provided most of the value and convert the dose into a human equivalent of 8 milligrams per kilogram. If we were to do the conversion of the different mouse models for my wife and I, we would see the following doses. I have just used the formula shown in the bottom, multiplying the human equivalent by the body weight in kilograms. You can see that for both of them, we are in the middle of the range. We did not, however, start with that amount on the first day. Instead, we started on a much smaller dose and waited to see how we felt. As we saw no side effects and we felt more energetic, we upped the dose over time. How much will work for you will depend on a number of things such as your age, fitness, weight, etc. Please listen to how you feel to decide what is the correct amount for you. And so when to take it. Dr. Sinclair takes his NMN on an empty stomach in the morning with his coffee, which is what we also do. Our NAD levels fluctuate throughout the day and the peak is in the morning as it is influenced by our circadian clock mechanism. Note that this graph is for mice, which are active at night, which is why the levels are highest in the dark period. Dr. Sinclair said that he wants to boost the NAD levels when they're high and not add NMN when the NAD levels are naturally low, which might upset the natural rhythm. As NAD levels are naturally lower at night, this might be the reason why it can interrupt your sleep if NMN is taken in the evening. Dr. Sinclair also mentioned on the Dr. Rhonda Patrick podcast 
that he believes for NMN to be effective, it needs to get above a certain threshold. So this is why we take all of ours at one time. By adding a supplement to the drinking water of older mice, researchers can artificially raise levels of NAD in cells. And how to take it. We have tried powder, capsules, tablets and lozenges. We have found that powder and capsules seem to work best for us. For powder, we dissolved this in a glass of water, though we did try sublingual. I found that this was not the best as the powder disappeared quite quickly and I am not sure how much was actually making it through the mucous membrane. Capsules and tablets we just take with water and the lozenge is specifically designed to be taken sublingually. It should be noted that NMN is also present in a number of foods that we eat, with edamame being the highest per 100 grams, though for any of them it would require a lot of the food to provide a significant amount of NMN. I hope that you found the video informative. We shall continue to provide information and what we find worthwhile to share while we are taking NMN, so please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.